this morning. He's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. Hallelujah. You are awesome. Hallelujah. You are sovereign. God, I worship who you are. Come on, somebody. Worship him for who he is today. Come on all over the house this morning. Let's stand up. Lord, I worship you for who you are, for who you are. You are awesome. Come on, somebody say, Lord Jesus, you are awesome. You are sovereign. God, I worship you. Why did you come to the house of the Lord this morning? I came to worship him. I came to magnify him this morning. He's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. God bless you. You can be seated this morning. Thank you, worship team. I appreciate your hard work. My, my. That's a worship song. I've been singing that all week. For who you are, Lord. I just want to give you a, a little bit of encouragement today. All my life, I've been a part of the United Pentecostal Church. And I'm grateful for it. I know that there are other churches, apostolic oneness churches, and I'm thankful for them. But I've always been a part of the United Pentecostal Church, and I'm grateful for that this body of believers. Does somebody say amen? It was the vehicle by which my family, amen, and others received the truth. In 2017, I'll just give you a little bit about what we are doing. We re the UPCI has received new records for total constitution ministers of churches. In the U.S. and Canada, we have about 10,400 credential ministers, 4,800 churches, including preacher points and daughter works. Around the world, support and missions is important because around the world, we have over 40,000 works in 190 nations and 30 territories with an estimated constituency of over 4 million. I'm grateful for that. Those are numbers, but they represent souls. And I do believe that it's important that we reach every soul with the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen, amen. Let's give the Lord a hand clap of worship. Amen. Thank you, brother. Thank you. Amen. That's all right. You can stand and give the Lord some praise this morning. He's worthy of all praise, glory, and honor. All praise, glory, and honor. Amen. Praise God. You can be seated. And, uh, you know, I'm going to tell you something. Sister Brandy, I sent you an email uh, with that picture. And I hope that you were able to maybe bring that up. I want to show everybody the picture of that Brother Thomas. We, we started reading that declaration over our tithes and offering. I think it's powerful. I think it's powerful. I do believe it. You know, you see, you got to say it and believe it. You say, well, why'd you change it up, Brother Bumgarner? First of all, you know, sometimes it's, it's wonderful. We, the men come up here, and sometimes they're just thinking, what, what can I say to take up offering? And you don't know what to say. And then out of the blue, you know, Brother Myers back there minding his own business. Just ready to give his offering. And Brother Stain says, Brother Myers, pray over the offering. More, more than once. But you know what? And that's fine. And, and it, that's okay. But I just felt like I wanted to incorporate something that is effective, that we say and we believe. I'm going to prove to you that it works. Brother Thomas called me. Was it? Hang on, don't put it up for you. Oh, That's my surprise. <laughs> We're talking about remodeling our sanctuary. And, and uh, Brother Sisk here, he says, Now, Brother Bumgarner, I know it cost you a little bit more, but really, for, huh? No, it's not. It's more efficient. Sorry, I got to get him right if I'm going to quote him. But it's more efficient. Amen. If. if uh, you put sheetrock over what's there. They give it double insulation and, and uh, you know, better sound barrier. And I'm like, it's not in the budget. It'll look better because it'll, everything will be fresh. I said, we ain't, it's not in the budget, really. I'm, I'm not bud I, I budgeted to just paint over, just do a little facelift. 
But Brother Thomas called me on Friday. And first of all, I had to get him straight. Because he called me and said, do you think your dad would be interested? Now, dad's in Oklahoma, but he would have been interested. He said, my representative from Lowe's called me, and uh, they got a shipment of sheetrock in, and it's got some damaged corners or ends. He said, it's not bad. And uh, my ears perked up, and I said, forget about dad. He's fine in Oklahoma. Folks, we bought 400 sheets, and God blessed. We bought all of that sheetrock for $1.35 a sheet. It's normally $13. Say again. $3,900 in saving. And God put it on somebody's heart to donate it, the funds. So I scrambled and went and got a storage building, amen, so we could store it. And uh, I'm thankful for that. You can be seated, man. God's good. I don't know about you, but that, I love my daddy, but he ain't getting my sheetrock. <laughs> God's preparing. You think about it, David put up in the storehouse when he was going to build the temple. Amen. So I, 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 I promise you. When you give unto the Lord, you get those phone calls. Yeah, I know exactly, I, I was in sales, I was in distribution, I know exactly what happened. That load of sheetrock come in and just some of the tail ends of them were, were, were damaged a little bit. But you're going to put mud and tape over it anyway. Yeah. Right, right. Amen. And, and Lowe's, but Lowe's can't sell it. So Lowe's calls the manufacturer. Hey, we've got to send this back to you. Don't send it back to me. We've already sent it out. We've already got it all done. Just do whatever you want with it. We'll send you another load. Now, out of all their customers in this region, you can't tell me God didn't say, call that man. You can't tell me that. You can't tell me that's not a God thing. And, and the thing is, it's not no, it's it's the green sheet rock, waterproof, water resist. Oh wait, let me get it right, brother Myers. I don't. So that was in my budget, wasn't it? That's right, because it was in God's budget. So I'm trying to tell somebody, hey, Amen. Me and Sister Bumgarner, we started praying and fast. We're just gonna believe God helps with that parking lot. Amen. If God can give me sheetrock, are you praying with me, Sister Myers? Amen. I, I'm, I'm going to believe God for it. I, I, I just, I, hey, when I read that, 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 that declaration, hey, I am a tither and I am a giver of my offerings. And my treasure is in the kingdom of God. And so if my heart's in the right place and my giving's in the, then God will bless us. Amen. And that's not me just trying to, to build you up and preach some you know, just given doctrine. I, I, you know, I'm not one of these, uh, you know, just prosperity doctors. I, doctrines. I don't believe in that. I believe in faithfulness. I believe in God's faithfulness. Amen. You can be seated. My, my, my. I'm going to encourage you because I'm going to preach to you in a minute. Amen. Our children's choir is going to sing tonight. You don't want to miss that. I know... Many leave for work and different things, but if you can be here, you want to be here to hear our children's choir. We're going to have another fantastic service tonight. Amen. I did not catch your name when you called me today, but I know you're from Oklahoma. Can I get your name? Rhonda. We're so blessed to have Sister Rhonda with us today from Tulsa, Oklahoma. When I saw the 918 on my phone in the office, I knew there was a fellow Oki amongst us. And uh, I'm thankful for that, and uh, I'm glad that she's here. Anything we can do for you, please let us be a servant to you while you're in our area. She's here working, and we're just thankful that she is here. But God is good to us today. Amen. Amen. I love him. I love him. I love him. Let's stand this morning as we turn to the book of Numbers, the 14th chapter, and the 22nd verse, Numbers 14 and 22, amen. Last night I had uh, dinner. Brother Mike Williams, the pastoral award, and I went to dinner with missionary Shane Hayes. 
who our church sponsors and supports and uh, uh, other churches had gotten him during the week and I just said well we already support you let me just take you to dinner and bless you and get a report God is doing great things in the country of Chile and uh, he, he was telling me that when uh, he went there in 2010 they had like 25 uh, churches and uh, over the last uh, eight years there's been a mighty revival and they have over 75 churches now so we rejoice in that we rejoice in what God is doing there amen numbers 14 and 22 amen thank you because all those men which have seen my glory and my miracles which I did in Egypt and in the wilderness and have tempted me now these ten times and have not hearkened to my voice surely they shall not see the land which I swear unto their fathers neither shall any of them that promote provoked me see it I I want to preach today from this thought getting Egypt out of me getting Egypt out of me Lord Jesus I thank you for your word today I ask you again Lord to anoint these lips of clay anoint every ear to hear Lord bring understanding to our mind help us mighty God to grow closer to you and I trust you Lord and I am believing God that, Lord, you will work in us. Take out of us today those things that need to be taken out. Put into us today the things that need to be put into us. Let the Holy Ghost flow through each of us in Jesus' name. Can the church say amen? Amen. Man, God bless you. You can be seated. Amen. God is so good. Amen. Come on now. God is good. Amen. amen. I don't want to scare some of you with my title. But I do want to talk to us today. The children of Israel and the story of their deliverance is at the same time both a powerful story of deliverance and yet it is the saddest story of a people who continuously long to go back to the bondage that at one time they cried for deliverance from to the Lord every one of us at surely at some time or the other has either read the story of the children of Israel being delivered from Egypt or perhaps amen at some point you saw the Ten Commandments back in the day before Jesus saved your soul <laughs> You saw how the children of Israel, amen, were delivered out of Pharaoh's hand. You, 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 you read where, amen, the, the plagues came upon the children of Egypt. And finally, after death visited the households of uh, the Egyptians, the uh, people let them go. And as they crossed over that Red Sea, you know, uh, you see that... Uh, God moves again in a very miraculous and mighty way. And they witnessed that. And they rejoiced. And they went to a bitter brook and there was bitter water and God gave them sweet water to drink. Yet there was something about them. Anytime things got a little tough, they would immediately begin to complain and cry out to go back to Egypt. Exodus the 16th chapter in the third verse. And the children of Israel said unto them. Would to God we had died by the hand of the Lord in the land of Egypt. When we sat by the flesh pots. And when we did eat bread to the full. For ye have brought us forth into this wilderness to kill the whole assembly with hunger. That was one of their complaints. Exodus 17 and 3. And the people thirsted there for water. And the people murmured against Moses and said, Wherefore is this that thou hast brought us up out of Egypt to kill us and our children and our cattle with thirst? So they're complaining about being hungry. They're complaining about being thirsty. Exodus 32 and 4. And he received them at their hand 
and fashioned it with a graving tool after he made it a molten calf. And they said, These be the gods of Israel, which brought thee up out of Egypt. They're constantly going back to things that they were delivered from, constantly complaining about, I want to go back to Egypt. I want to go back to that place where I was in bondage. Numbers the 11th chapter, and when the people complained, it displeased the Lord, and the Lord heard it, and his anger was kindled, and the fire of the Lord burned among them and consumed them that were in the uttermost parts of the camp. Complaining, murmuring. I've been delivered. I've been set free in the congregation. All they would do is murmur and complain. They complained about not having enough to eat and God provided manna. They complained about having nothing to drink and the Lord allowed there to be a rock. Now it's one thing for a, for a man to strike a rock with a rod and water come out of it. It was a living well. Oh, there's a lot of typology there that I could get into this morning. But that living well never went dry. And that living well followed them everywhere they went. <laughs> now I know that might... You've got to understand how God works. Brother Sisk and I were talking about paranormal last night. And reality. And how the types and the shadows. See all of this here is a type and a shadow of what's there. The tabernacle was already in display in glory. Before it was ever built down here. Oh, I want you to follow me this morning. I'm building a foundation. So. This I. What we're living here is that paranormal world, this fleshly world. But what we're really longing for is that spiritual world. Amen. And it's hard sometimes for us to understand that in this temporal world of the flesh, which is not finite, uh, but it's temporal, how that we can go from this place to that place, how we can move from being in the carnal, from being in the flesh, to walking in the spirit. And yet there has to be a connection between my flesh and to the Spirit. When you start praising God, you do it in the flesh. Amen. Somebody says, well, I don't believe you should move like that in church. That's in the flesh. You're absolutely right. I'm in the flesh. If I get to listen to some good music, I move a little bit. It's in me. I can't help it. You, you ain't going to take it out of me. It was born into me. I'm going to move. If I hear music, my head starts bobbing. It's in me. I got some rhythm. I got some soul. And if I hear music, I'm going to start moving. Amen. 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 I can't sit still. But I'm in my flesh. But there have been times, amen, when I was worshiping in my flesh that the spirit took over. And don't you discourage these babies when they're worshiping the Lord. Hey, let them worship the Lord. If they run, let them run. As long as it's in order. They're in order. They're, if we're worshiping, let them worship. If we're running, let them run. If we're jumping up and down, let them jump up and down. Hallelujah. Why? Because we're imparting to them a spirit of worship. And it always starts here in the flesh. But what we're desiring to do is go from this unnatural state of the flesh into the natural state of the spirit. Amen. And yet the children of Israel, amen, constantly reverted back to the will and the lust of the flesh rather than seeing and knowing the miracles of the spirit that were all around them. It displeased God so much that he was going to destroy them amen when you look at the book of numbers the 14th chapter i'm gonna slow down just a little bit because i really want to build this today i really want to impart something to you this morning they had witnessed miracles 
They said, we're tired of manna. God sent them quail. So thick that you could reach up in the air and just knock them down. That was a quail hunt, my friend. They gorged themselves to the place of death. And miracle after miracle, you, you wake up and your clothes aren't wore out. You wake up and your shoes aren't wore out. And yet, constantly, their hearts were beating to go back to Egypt, a place of bondage, a place of suffering. In Numbers, the 14th chapter, and all the congregation lifted up their voice and cried, and the people wept that night. And all the children of Israel murmured against Moses and against Aaron. And the whole congregation said to them, Would God that we had died in the land of Egypt? Or would God we had died in this wilderness? Now, let me just give you a little a witness here. There had been a report. There's giants in the land. We'll never be able to take the promised land because there's giants. Only two of them said, Hey, it's flowing with milk and honey. There's grapes that takes two men to carry. The honeycombs are so sweet in this land. It's a land of promise. But everybody wanted to listen to the negativity. My, my question today is, whose report are you going to believe? Are you going to listen to the report of the world that says it's gloom and doom and, 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 and everything's going in disarray? As long as you are serving the Lord, you can claim your promise. You can claim your promise. God will work on your behalf. God will be on your side. I just wish somebody would hear me today. I'm tired of negativity trying to influence the witness of the Holy Ghost. God's promises are for you and for your family. Amen. If, if Brother Manuel and Sister Lupe and family would have listened to the doctors and nurses, he wouldn't have walked in here today. Amen. He wouldn't have been walking in here today. He's supposed to be an invalid. He's not even really supposed to be here with us today. But whose report are you going to believe? The report of the doctors and men who's practicing from their knowledge or a God in heaven says, I'm the owner of everything. I rule and reign in righteousness. Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost. I feel like preaching a little bit. We got to get over the pettiness with God. We get concerned and we let jealous spirits start infiltrating us because we're afraid somebody else is going to get blessed and we're not going to get our... Stop worrying about it. Stop worrying about it. Let God bless them. My Lord, if you get blessed and you get a new truck, I'm going to rejoice with you. Amen. You get a new house, I'm going to rejoice with you. Why some people are blessed and others not at your attitude. You're so worried that you're not going to get yours. I'm going to tell you something. If you're faithful and you follow after the word of God and you do what you're supposed to do, the blessings of God will come down on you. Mama, that ain't even in my notes, but I just feel like I need to tell somebody today. Don't murmur and complain because somebody else has received a blessing. God sees everything. God knows everything. He's not fooled. He sees us at our best and he sees us at our worst. And again, they're crying to go back to the land of Egypt. And wherefore hath the Lord brought us into this land to fall by the sword that our wives and our children should be a prey were it not better for us to return into Egypt? And so they're crying to return back to Egypt. And Moses and Aaron fell on their faces before all the assembly of the congregation of the children of Israel. And Joshua the son of Nun and Caleb the son of Jephunneh, which were of them that searched the land, rent their clothes. They were, they were just, ah! Frustrated, aggravated. I can feel their pain sometime. They said the land which we passed through to search it is an exceeding good land. I mean, Caleb and Joshua said, y'all better listen up. If the Lord delight in us, oh, 
If the Lord delight in us, then he will bring us into this land and give it us a land which floweth with milk and honey. Only rebel not against the Lord. Brother Shane Hayes, as I was talking to him last night, we were talking about different things, church business and different things and, uh, and, and, and things that were going on. And he said, Bishop Kilgore, he said, you know, when, when somebody would be having problems and, and going through a hard time and they would start complaining about how life, rough life was and Brother Kilgore would call them in or they would come counsel with him, the first thing he would do was go to his secretary and pull up their tithing account. He said, Brother Kilgore shared, he said, and what Brother Kilgore found out most times when people were having problems. Now, hey, I, I'm not here trying to tell you. To, it's between you and the Lord, okay? It's between you and God. It don't affect me. You, you better understand that. I'm thankful for every giver in this church. I'm thankful God has given me the opportunity to pastor this church full time. But I promise you, amen, it's between you and God. It's between you and the Lord. Amen. And he'd say the first thing you need to do is start paying your tithes if you want to get this curse off of you. If you want God to bless you, you need to start understanding the principles. If you want to remove a curse from your life, you ought to say, okay, Lord, I'm not going to hide nothing from you. I'm going to give according to the, uh, the harvest of my house. And I tell you, that, that's where you find blessing. Not based on the preacher. Not based on anything other than, God, I've been faithful. And the see, the, a lot of times, all the people can see is the negativity. Well, there are giants in the land. There are oppositions in the land. There are things going on. Hey, that parking lot to me is a giant. I'm just going to be real with you this morning. That parking lot a, is a giant to me. It's a big parking lot, and it's going to cost a lot to fix it. But you know what? It's not bigger than my God. It's not bigger than my God. I don't know where it's going to come from. But I'm not, and I'm not asking for just a topical coat, Brother Backus. I'm not asking him just to put a look. I want it fixed all the way to the core. All the way right. I don't want it just halfway done. I want it right. And I don't know what the cost tag is, but he does. Amen. But you better know this pastor has been saying, now, Lord, we're a faithful church. We bless missionaries. We bless other preachers. Uh, we bless other people. We've gone beyond ourselves sometimes in giving. So, Lord, I'm just asking you, help us out a little bit. I don't know where it's coming from, but it's coming. Oh, pastor, you're just talking out of your head. You're just talking. No, I got Elijah in the, uh, Elisha, uh, you know, Elijah in the back of my mind saying, go look for the cloud. Go look for the cloud. Go look for the cloud. I, all I see is a cloud about the size of a man's hand. It's just a little thing. That's all right. It's all God needs. I don't need a whole lot of, I just got to have enough faith to say, okay, Lord. Okay, Lord. I don't know how you're going to do it, but I'm going to trust you to do it. They're crying to go back to Egypt. They're crying to go back to the things. Uh, amen. The, they're crying. God got so upset he was just going to destroy them. And Moses said, no, wait a second. The Egyptians are going to hear of it. You don't want that to be a bad report. The Lord said, I'm going to be glorified. Moses cries out, pardon, I beseech thee the iniquity of this people according to thy greatness of thy mercy. And the Lord said, I have pardoned according to thy word, Numbers 14 and 20. But as truly as I live, all the earth shall be filled with the glory of, God, of the Lord. Because all those men which have seen my glory and my miracles, which I did in Egypt and in the wilderness, and have tempted me now these ten times, have not hearkened to my voice, surely they shall not see the land which I spare unto them. God was finally fed up with their attitude. He had delivered them from Egypt and the bondage of slavery. He had performed miracle after miracle before them. But they always longed for Egypt. And in the end, they were at the place 
where they could have crossed into the promised land. It was right there. They could have possessed the land. God was going to make a way. He'd already declared, I'm going to send the hornets before you. But it was their unbelief and their doubt in the Savior who had delivered them out of Egypt. And the most swaying factor was this, that they had been delivered from Egypt. But Egypt had not left them. Now, I'm from Oklahoma, and we got a little saying. You can take the boy out of the country, but you can't take the country out of the boy. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, and amen. I'll go downtown Houston in my overalls if I'm so of a mind to. And I'll be happy to do it. It'd be just fine. But with that said, Sometimes I'm afraid that there's a decree being said. You can take the sinner out of the world, but you can't take the world out of the saint. Do I need to say that again? You can take the sinner out of the world, but you can't take the world out of the saint. Egypt is a type of the world. And many of us today are like the Israelites. We've been delivered from our bondage. We've been taken out of the world that had, was a cruel taskmaster. Amen. Uh, amen. We were delivered. We were set free. We come to the house of God. We repented of our sins uh, at an altar like Acts 2.38 says. We repented of our sins. We were baptized in Jesus' name for the remission of those sins. Uh, and we received the gift of the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in other tongues just as it was promised in Acts 2 and 39. For the promise is unto you and to your children and to all that are far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. You may have come to an altar and wept. You may come to an altar and weep and cry. And God touched you and that's good. Amen. But I believe there's more than just that one time experience. I'm in the process of sanctification. And you got to be in the process of sanctification. What is sanctification? God working on me every day uh, to be more like him, uh, to take the world out of me, uh, to get rid of the things that are not of him in me. Me and Brother Packers don't sit and talk about what he's going to teach and say and what I'm going to preach and say. We don't do that. Uh, but it amazes me week after week how God just intertwines the lesson with the message. Amen. Amen. But you got to get rid of the world. Because living for God, you think, is too hard for you. And sometimes you're in church and you're wanting God to give you the victory and you start remembering how it used to be. You say, oh man, I remember the good times. You don't remember how it destroyed your family's life. You don't remember the effect that it had on your children. You don't remember how it hurt your family, cost you a great job. Through the selfishness of the flesh, I long for Egypt more than I long for the presence of God. You see, God can deliver you out of your Egypt. God can deliver you out of the world, but you got to be willing to get the world out of your heart. You got to be willing to get the world out of your spirit. You got to be willing to say, Lord, take this world, but give me Jesus. Oh, I'm preaching to you now, whether you agree with it or not. Too many times, amen, you want the blessings of God, but you're so afraid to let go of the world. I can't give this up. I can't give that. I like it. I love it too much. And there's a promised land 
that God's wanting to give you. But because the world is so entrenched in your heart. There's nothing worth going to hell over. You know, you will always be separated. We talk about being a separated people. That is what it says, Brother Myers. You will be separated from the... What did Paul say in 2 Corinthians? He was quoting there. Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness? This is not me speaking. This is the word of God. Paul speaking in 2 Corinthians 6 and 14. For what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness? And what communion hath light with darkness? And what concord hath Christ with Belial? Or what part hath he that believeth with an infidel? And what agreement hath the temple of God with idols? And ye are the temple of the living God. I preach that harder than anybody I know. You are the temple of the Holy Ghost. Uh, this is a house of worship. We come together to worship Him. But you are the temple of the Holy Ghost. Where you go, the Spirit of the Lord goes with you. Amen. Why? As God has said, I will dwell in them and walk in them. And I will be their God and they shall be my people. Wherefore, come out from amongst them. From among them and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing. And I will receive you, and I will be a father unto you, and ye shall be my sons and daughters, saith the Lord Almighty. That's not me. That was the Apostle Paul. But if that's not enough, Peter had something to say about it. Peter said in 1 Peter 2 and 9, But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and holy nation, a peculiar people, that ye should show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness, out of Egypt, out of the world, into his marvelous light, which in time past were not a people, but are now the people of God, which had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. Dearly beloved, I beseech you as strangers and pilgrims, abstain from fleshly lust which war against the soul. So that's what he has called us to do. To be separated from the world. From the things of the world. From the lust of the world. From the love of the world. So you'll either be separated from the world or you will be separated from the Lord Jesus, the Almighty God. You're going to be separated from something. You decide what you're going to be separated from. Ha. How do you say that, Brother Bumgarner? First John 2 and 15. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that love, for all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world passeth away, and the lust thereof, but he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. So if we love the world, the love of God is not in us. I'm not saying that. The word of God is saying that. So you have to make up your mind. Am I going to be separated from God? Or am I going to be separated from this world? It's more than just rules and regulations, Sister Loopy. I know you know that. I'm not, don't, don't say, oh, I'm going to go around. No, no, no. I'm just talking to we're having a conversation. It's more than rules and regulations. It's more than do's and don'ts. It's I love you, Jesus. And I don't want to be aligned with this world. I don't want to look like this world. I don't want to act like this world. I'm in the world, but I'm not of the world. 
Hallelujah. So you're separated this morning, either from the world or from the Lord. You say, well, the world did not love Jesus. And if the world didn't love Jesus, the world's not going to love you. The world's not going to love anyone that takes a stand for godliness and holiness and righteousness in this hour. Not going to happen. They're going to say that, you know, you're not, uh, uh, you know, you, you're just uh, not tolerant and, and, and you're judgmental and you're this and that. First of all, I'm not here to judge you. I'm just here to give the word of God to you. But I can tell you this, uh, amen, I'm not worried about your hide as much as I'm worried about my hide. I know that may have just hurt some of y'all's feelings. Well, you, you, I want to make it to heaven. I want you to be saved. I'm preaching this this morning to wake you up and say, you know what, Lord? I need to get separated from the world and the things of the world. But if I'm preaching to you, I'm preaching to me. Son, you better get yourself aligned with God and not aligned with the things of this world. Jesus said in John 15 and 18, if the world hates you, you know that it hated me before it hated you. If you were of the world, the world would love his own. Huh? Brother Myers, do you love my children? Are you sure? You think you love your kids more than I love my kids? Do you think you love my children more than I love my children? But do you love them more than I do? Oh, that was a true answer. I mean, do you do you love my children? Do you think you love your my children more than I do? Why not? Father's love. They're my children. Says, Luke, you love my children? You think you love them more than I do? They're my own. They're my own. Come on, your children are your own. See, the world loves their own. The world doesn't love something that says, I don't want to be like you. The world doesn't like someone that says, I'm going to take a stand for God in my school. The world doesn't like a, a teenager saying, I'm going to witness to somebody about who Jesus is. And, you know, and they're all confused about their identity. I'm going to help give them a godly identity. Oh, I know I'm operating in the spirit right now. Because you're not of the world. But I have chosen you out of the world. Therefore, the world hateth you. Oh, Jesus. See, if the world really loves you, you belong to them. Egypt still owns you. I've been in ministry for a lot of years and I've helped a lot of people. I'm grateful for that. But one thing you notice is when people have gone through traumatic experiences, amen, the first thing they have to do is be willing to let it go. They will carry that with them, that repressed what they've gone through, they will keep it inside and it will, care, it will torment them for years and years and years and they can never truly function in the present because they're constantly having to battle the past. They carry it with them. They can't ever let it go. There's people that come to the house of the Lord and the Lord delivers you and sets you free and yet 
something comes up and I'm going back to Egypt. I'm going back to the world. And the world says, oh, I recognize you. You're one of my own. I'll, I'll take you back. You look like me. Amen. You act like me. You're part of me. And Jesus says, I want you to be one of mine. But if you're going to be his, you've got to act like him. You've got to be like him. Jesus has given each of us free will to decide who we're going to be aligned with and separated from in this hour. You're either going to be aligned with the Lord Jesus or you're going to be aligned with Egypt. That Egypt that we've never really gotten out of our hearts will cause us to be lost forever. I don't want to be lost. I, I don't want to lose out with the Lord. I would hate to have been in this all my life, 45, almost 46 years, and yet make heaven my home. Or to go to heaven and the Lord say, I'm sorry, son. Because I begin to think about every service where I felt the power of God's Spirit. Every service where I got lost just in that heavenly language, me and the Lord. I would hate to think that I would allow the world to creep in and not let it get out of my spirit and to keep me from reaching the promised land. I'd hate for it to keep you out. Moses passed away. The next generation of the children of Israel began to make their way into the promised land. Maybe some heard mom and dad tell stories about the world and wanted to go back to the world and be like the world. Started giving Joshua some problems. But Joshua reminds them in Joshua 24 and 1. Joshua gathered all the tribe of Israel to Shechem. Called for the elders of Israel, for their heads, and for their judges, and for their officers. And they presented themselves before God. And Joshua said unto all the people, Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, Your fathers dwelt on the other side of the flood in old time, even Tara." the father of Abraham and the father of Nicor, and they served other gods. And I took your father Abraham from the other side of the flood and led him throughout all the land of Canaan and multiplied his seed and gave him Jacob. And I gave unto Jacob, Isaac, Jacob, and Esau, and I gave unto Esau Mount Seir and to possess it. But Jacob and his children went down into Egypt. And I sent Moses also in Aaron. I plagued Egypt according to that which I did among them. And afterwards I brought you out. And I brought your fathers out of Egypt. You came into the sea, and the Egyptians pursued after your fathers with chariot and horsemen into the Red Sea. And when they cried unto the Lord, he put darkness between you and the Egyptians and brought the sea upon them and covered them. And your eyes have seen what I've done in Egypt, and ye dwelt in the wilderness a long season. And I brought you into the land of the Amorites, which dwelt on the other side, Jordan, and they fought with you. And I gave them into your hand that ye might possess their land. And I destroyed them from before you. Then Balak, the son of Zephyr, king of Moab, arose and warred against Israel and sent and called Balaam, the son of Beor, to curse you. But I would not hearken unto Balaam. Therefore, he blessed you still, so I delivered you out of his hand. And he went over Jordan and came unto Jericho. And the men of Jericho fought against you, the Amorites, the Prezerites, and the Canaanites, the Hittites, and the Gershites, and the Hivites, and the Jebusites. And I delivered them into your hand. God's reminding them of all the victories I've given you, all the all the things I've delivered you from. All the things that I have helped you. I sent the hornet before you. Which drave them out from before you. Even the two kings of the Amorites. But not with thy sword nor with thy bow. And I have given you a land. For which you did not labor. Oh my. We're blessed here this morning. I owe a debt of gratitude. To many who have gone before in this congregation. Amen. We have what we have. Because they took a stand. They have worked. They have labored. We didn't labor like they did. In cities which ye built not. And ye dwell in them. Of the vineyards and the olive yards. Which ye planted not do ye. Now therefore fear the Lord. And serve him. In sincerity and in truth. And put away the gods. Which your fathers. Served on the other side of the flood. And in Egypt. Serve ye the Lord. You see, 
Egypt trying to creep back in. God's trying to creep back in. Spirit's trying to creep back in. Pull you away from the house of God. From living for Him. But the next verse is probably the most quoted <coughs> scripture. No matter what denomination, what faith. But those that believe, I'll quote this next verse. You walk in and it's in most every house. Joshua 24, 15. And if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord. If it seem evil unto you to separate yourself and live for God. If it seem evil for you today to decide you don't want to live for Him but serve all these other gods. Choose you this day whom you will serve. Whether the gods which your father served that were on the other side or the gods of the Amorites in whose land ye dwell. <coughs> but as for me and my house. We will serve. The people answered, God forbid that we should forsake the Lord to serve other gods. Can you stand to your feet this morning? I appreciate your attentiveness. I appreciate you preaching with me this morning. But my call goes out to you. Are you allowing God to get Egypt out of your heart? Are you allowing God to change you today? Or are you stuck vacillating between church, living for God, being like the world, letting worldliness creep in, letting Egypt creep into your spirit? Come on, we all face it. We all fight it. Spirits of the world constantly bombarding us. But you got to decide. I'm going to serve the Lord. I'm going to live for the Lord. You see, God can deliver you out of the world. <coughs> but you have to be willing to let the world out of you. Amen. That's the I wonder if we begin to pray, play some worship music this morning. I want to just call the prayer warriors asking them to come. <coughs> I just wonder who wants to say, Lord, I want to serve you. Whether you've been in church a long time or just a short while. Maybe you just want to come to the altar this morning and say, Lord, I've run from you long enough. I want to serve you. I don't want to be in one day and out the next. I don't want to vacillate between living for you and being like, the, I don't want to do that, Lord. I don't want to be separated from you, Jesus. Because if I'm separated from you, then I'm aligned with the world. But if I'm, if I'm separated from the world, then I'm aligned with you, Jesus. I'm choosing to serve you today, Lord. I don't want to serve the gods of this world. I want to serve you, Lord. Come on now. Can you reach out to him? Prayer warriors, begin to pray. Come on, some of you have been going through a hard time. You need the Lord to touch your life. I'm encouraging you. Would you come today?